Hello boys and girls. Today we're going to install the EK Pro Series water block for the RTX A6000. I haven't seen anything like this online, so I thought it might be useful to upload it, so I'm going to have to do it anyway. So we're going to start by removing the port covers for the NVLink bridge and the other one. Then we're going to want to remove the screws along the edge of the card here. We're going to want a T6 bit. And there are two, four, six, eight, ten screws around the perimeter. Next, we'll remove the two screws with the retention mechanism in the back, but since they're already removed, we'll skip on to the next portion, which is removing the faceplate. For this, we'll need a T8. There are four screws holding this in place. Once those four are removed, you should be able to remove the bracket. And then it's a matter of carefully removing the shroud. Now the PCIe power connector, so the uh, EPS power connector in the back, is still going to be attached. So you want to be very careful not to pull this off too far because we're going to have to unscrew this uh, connector. I believe we need a T6 for this. And this uh, T6 screw is slightly longer than the ones that are installed in the shroud. So make sure to keep that set aside. We should be able to now remove the PCIe power connector carefully, making sure not to damage any of the contacts. And now we have the shroud off. For our next step, we're going to remove the heatsink, but to do this, we first have to remove the backplate. Now, we have to be careful when removing the backplate because the uh, fan is connected to the PCB here. So when we pull this off, we don't want to pull, snap, or damage the connection for the power of the fan. So we're going to carefully begin to separate the backplate from the PCB. Don't bend the PCB in the process. Only apply some pressure to the black backplate itself. There should be um, some thermal pads on the backplate that are uh, connected to the VRAM modules on the back. And this is what's providing the resistance, the pressure from preventing this from coming off. You can, if you have difficulty shifting it off, one thing that you can do is try and shift the backplate back and forth a little bit. Uh, be careful, try and grab it from a delicate portion of the PCB. This can help loosen the grip that the thermal pads have, and then you can try to pull it off once again. There we go. All right, now see how delicate this cable here is? Be very careful. We're going to use our tweezers here and retract the metal housing very carefully. Once that's fully retracted, we should be able to lift the power connector out. There we go. And now our backplate is separated. We want to try and preserve the pad location in case we want to reinstall the air cooler. Now, 
I'm going to remove the retention mechanism for the um, heatsink. Carefully remove the four screws holding that in place. I recommend removing it in a cross pattern so we don't put too much pressure on any one part. Now we want to be very delicate and separate the heat sink from the VRAMs, the VRMs, and the die. So you want to typically start because uh, same thing with the back there's going to be a whole bunch of thermal pads that are bonding this to the surface of the heatsink so start by kind of loosening the connection a little bit just by shifting it back and forth don't go too far because there's you know some delicate surface mount components that are uh, we don't want to scrape off if we are too aggressive about it and once we've done that we've gotten the heatsink off we revealed our GPU. The next uh, step is to clean the, the surfaces of the VRAM modules, the VRMs, all the components, and prepare it for the block. But before doing that, I recommend since we're going to be removing the uh, thermal pads, taking a picture of the pad location so that if we have to reproduce this in the future, then we can easily do so. And then we simply want to begin removing and cleaning. Now we're going to start by installing the pads. The pads are provided by EK. They're the right thickness. So we want to be sure to use these pads specifically. We'll have to cut them down to size. At this point, I'm just going to be using the guide that's provided by EK on their website for the pad locations. So please refer to that instead of the video in case there's any inconsistencies. Now we'll be installing the thermal interface material. I don't use the provided EK material. I prefer to use uh, the Arctic MX-5. I find it's more stable. It doesn't tend to drop temperature over time. And I tend to prefer it to the material that's provided with the GPU. With that said, it can be quite challenging to spread. Uh, because this is a die and not an integrated heat spreader, we need to make sure that we cover every inch of the surface. Um, uh, we don't want to use too much material, but we want to try and get as thin a layer as possible that covers every part of the die, because without that we'll have localized heating and the thermal interface material may dry out faster.
Now that we've finished installing the thermal interface material, the last step we have to do before installing the block is removing the uh, plastic coating covers on the uh, thermal pads. This can be a little bit challenging, be just a little delicate because you don't want to pull off the top layer of the thermal pad or the thermal pad from the uh, heatsink. But, you know, if you're patient, it'll work okay. Now it's time for us to install the card onto the heatsink. It's important that we get the screw alignment correct. If the screws aren't aligned here, then the PCB could in interfere with our ability to properly mount the backplate. So uh, be sure to line it up correctly, apply a small amount of pressure, Once the card is properly aligned, we can use the original retention mechanism from the GPU and four provided screws with plastic washers. Next, we have to attach the EPS connector to the heatsink. There's a small attachment held in by two screws on top. They can be unscrewed with one of the provided hex wrenches, the smaller of the two. Now that the bracket is removed, we can install the EPS connector. We want to make sure that the attachment point for the EPS connector is aligned with the notch in the back of the plate. The EPS connector will slide in. There's a little plastic tab effectively, and it slides right into the little um, metal grooves there. Carefully compact the wires down. We don't want to damage any of the connections. And then once we have it securely in that area, we're going to connect the two screws to hold it in place. Once again, we're going to prepare the back of the card to install the back plate. We're going to use the provided thermal pads and make sure that uh, all the surfaces mentioned in the manual are properly covered. The next step is to install a thin layer of thermal interface material on the triangular region on the backplate. This will help heat transfer from the backplate to the cold plate on the front. Our last step here is just to install the backplate. Using the provided backplate and the screws, install the backplate onto the back of the card. And that's all there is to it. The heat sink is installed. Everything is lined up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and uh, go ahead and like if you could like it. And thanks.